This man, Dr. Wen Ho Lee, is a nuclear scientist that many, if not most Americans, have come to believe stole America's most closely guarded nuclear secrets and passed them on to the People's Republic of China. Even though he's never been charged with a crime, Dr. Lee was fired from his job in the top secret Division X at Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. He's been portrayed in newspapers across the country as a traitor. And now, wherever he goes, he's trailed by government agents. Despite that, Dr. Wen Ho Lee has not spoken publicly until now. Why are you talking to us, Dr. Lee? It's a point I should try to tell the public. The, the American public. American public, the fact and the truth. And that's why I'm here. And the truth is? The truth is I'm innocent. I have not done anything wrong with what they tried to accuse me. Because Dr. Lee is facing possible federal charges that could result in his being sent to prison, his attorney, Mark Holscher, requested that any interruptions Holscher made to our questions during the interview be off the record, and we agreed. Did you at any time pass any information, any U.S. nuclear secrets, to the People's Republic of China? No, I never have done that, and I have no intention doing that at all, period. The allegation that Dr. Lee had indeed passed nuclear secrets to China first came to the nation's attention last March when the New York Times ran a story quoting unnamed government sources. The Times said the FBI had a suspect in a case of espionage who had allegedly transferred to the Chinese government information on the most advanced weapon in the American nuclear arsenal the miniaturized W-88 thermonuclear warhead. Two days later, Secretary of Energy Bill Richardson personally fired Wen Ho Lee. We dismissed an employee who was not following proper security procedures at the lab, who was under suspicion for security breaches. Immediately after Dr. Lee was fired from his top secret job at the Los Alamos National Laboratory, the national media descended on him and his wife and shattered what his neighbors say was a tranquil life in their modest Los Alamos home. For the past five months, the Lees have been receiving hate mail and death threats and have been hounded by reporters and trailed by federal agents. Wen Ho Lee has spent almost his entire adult life in the United States, much of it doing sensitive scientific work for the U.S. government. He had come to the U.S. from Taiwan in 1964 at the age of 26 to attend Texas A&M. He received his doctorate there in mechanical engineering in 1970, became a U.S. citizen in 1974. Then he worked for the Argonne National Laboratory in Illinois, and for the past 21 years, he has been at Los Alamos. Last week in Washington, standing across the street from the White House, he talked about his life in this country. I devote the best time of my life to this country to make the country stronger, mm -hmm. particularly in the nuclear weapon area. Yeah. And I try to make the country stronger and so we can protect the American people. Right. But suddenly they told me I'm a traitor and I'm just totally lost. I mean, I I'm, I'm just don't understand this this whole, you know, things. Bill Richardson was the only U.S. government official who agreed to go on camera to speak about Dr. Lee's case. We were turned down by the White House, the Department of Justice, the FBI, and the CIA. Secretary Richardson would not say whether he thinks Wen Ho Lee is guilty of espionage, but he was adamant that Lee broke several of the Department of Energy's security regulations. Mr. Secretary, when you fired Wen Ho Lee, were you persuaded that he was a spy for the People's Republic of China. Apart from the espionage case, this individual massively violated our security procedures at Los Alamos. Number one, improper contact with Chinese officials, failure to report them. Number two, improperly safeguarding security information at Los Alamos. And thirdly, not being up front, deceiving Los Alamos officials about a number of security instances. He failed two polygraphs, one from the Department of Energy, one from the FBI, and later we found out, perhaps the most vast, massive of the security violations, an improper transfer of nuclear weapons information 
from classified to unclassified in the Los Alamos computers. Secretary Richardson told me yesterday that you, quote, improperly transferred information on nuclear weapons from the classified to the unclassified open computers, which makes it pretty accessible to everybody. You understand what he says? Uh, some of them are true, some of them are not true. I, I will explain to you. Please. The reason I download the computer code from classified machine to unclassified machine is part of my job to protect my code, to protect my file. I do that routinely. I have never uh, give those you know, information to any unauthorized person. Plus, I, when I download into unclassified machine, unclassified. I have a three level of password. Three. Three passwords. Three passwords. It's, it's almost impossible for anybody to break in. You know, sometimes I even have a hard time to break in myself. <laughs> and so I think what he said was uh, misleading. We spoke with the head of electrical engineering and computer science at MIT, who told us that if Dr. Lee secured his computer files with three well-chosen passwords, there would have been almost no chance that any unauthorized person could have guessed those passwords to access those computer files. Stephen Schwartz is publisher of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, the country's leading nuclear journal. Apparently he is charged with downloading from a very top secret computer to a less secret or maybe even an unclassified yes, computer correct. on his desk. Right. In his office, which is in a secured area of Los Alamos, this information didn't go to his house or somewhere else. Yeah. Downloading what to that other computer? Well, apparently he downloaded something called legacy codes. These are, we've tested nuclear weapons. We've conducted 1,030 nuclear weapons tests mm -hmm. since 1945, more than all the other countries in the world combined. And we collected all sorts of data about how the weapon worked and everything. And all of that has been fed into computers and refined over the years. So as we conducted more tests, we were able to create complex codes. So he was working on these codes refining them, updating them as part of the stockpile stewardship program. Well, that's his job. That's his job, exactly. He wasn't doing anything that he, I mean, he didn't have access to something he shouldn't have had access to. This was his job. But well, why was it then such a big deal? His downloading from the top secret computer to the one on his desk, which is less secret. The big deal would be that under Department of Energy security regulations, classified information on computers is supposed to stay on classified computers. Mm -hmm. And unclassified information is supposed to stay on unclassified computers. That's fine in theory. In practice, many other scientists at Los Alamos and elsewhere have routinely violated those regulations. And that's one reason why Wen Ho Lee hasn't been charged yet with violating that particular regulation because they'd probably have to go out and cite several hundred other people at Los Alamos for the same thing. Well, they probably would have to go out and indict John Deutsch, the former head of the CIA. Absolutely, absolutely. Because he downloaded stuff and, and apparently took it to his home computer. His home, his laptop computer, which was connected to the internet, absolutely, which is a much more serious transgression than anything Wen Ho Lee has been accused of. Now, I don't know what was on Mr. Deutsch's computer, but the fact is that that violated CIA regulations and possibly other regulations too. His excuse was he forgot or whatever, but you know, that doesn't cut it with Wen Ho Lee. It shouldn't cut it with him either. It's a very common practice, and I don't understand why I was singled out for this particular issue. I still don't understand why. I know there's many people do the same thing. He violated our national security procedures at Los Alamos as a government employee of the United States. Well, uh, apparently he did, and apparently he has acknowledged that he did, but he's not alone. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of people who work for the Department of Energy, you, you've said so in effect yourself, and other people have said, who do the same darn thing, and have over the years. All I know is that it is wrong and improper to download nuclear weapons information from the classified component of the computer to the unclassified. This was done. This is something that we are not going to tolerate. By Wen Ho Lee? Yes. Are you not going to tolerate it with all the other people who have done the same thing 
if anybody else has done that and we have the information, uh, we are going to treat them the same way we're treating this individual. While as far as we can determine, there is no evidence that Dr. Lee passed on nuclear secrets to the Chinese, the U.S. government is now preparing to charge him with criminally mishandling his computer files. If he is so charged, Dr. Lee would be the first American ever prosecuted for moving secret data from a classified to an unclassified computer without any proof that the secret data fell into the wrong hands. Despite the furor surrounding this case, law enforcement officials working on it told us it is doubtful that Dr. Lee will ever be charged with espionage. The officials originally suspected espionage partly on the basis of two trips that Dr. Lee made to China in the 1980s, when he allegedly had unauthorized contacts with Chinese government officials. The contacts that Secretary Richardson mentioned as one of his reasons for firing Lee. He was dismissed from his job for violating Department of Energy regulations uh, and for apparently not reporting a contact that he had had in China. Someone came up to him and solicited information from him which he did not want to divulge. He did not, in other words, give out information. How do you know that? That's what his lawyer has said. Now, under the rules, you're supposed to report that kind of contact and he apparently failed to do so in a timely fashion. But to then make a leap from that to say that, well, he is the centerpiece of a massive organized spy ring here that's funneled information about all of the nuclear weapons in our arsenal to China. There's a big gap there that needs to be filled. These two trips to China were authorized? Absolutely. They were approved by the laboratory. And by the FBI? Yes. And the words that he said, that the speeches that he made there, authorized? Yes. And okay. Yes, and unclassified. Yeah. And his wife, Sylvia, she was what? An informant for the FBI as was Wen Ho Lee at one point. Not an informant, but he was working with the FBI in the case of another uh, Taiwanese-American uh, uh, suspected of espionage at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, the individual suspected mm -hmm. in the case of the neutron bomb. These are not characteristics that one normally associates with spies. What about the fact that he failed a lie detector test? Well, lie detector tests are inadmissible in courts of law for a very that. good reason. Uh, Aldrich James passed all of his lie detector tests, and he's a known spy. So there's no way that you can use a lie detector test and say definitively, this man is a spy. It could have been he was getting very agitated at the tenor of questioning, realizing as the media news tightened and as the New York Times time stories came out, that he was the man in the spotlight. He was the one that they were going after. And the single nuclear device around which so much controversy is swirling is the W88, which is what? The W-88 is a nuclear warhead. It's the last nuclear warhead the United States produced. It sits atop our Trident II submarine launch ballistic missile. There's about 400 of them in the arsenal. And what they're saying is that he, Wen Ho Lee, I don't know that they're saying it officially, mm -hmm. but we've been led to believe that somehow he has made available to the Chinese information about the manufacture of, the, the science of the W-88? Right, exactly what information he is alleged to have provided is not clear, but I think it's important to look at where that allegation comes from. It comes from the fact that a Chinese, an agent working for the Chinese intelligence service, walked into a U.S. consulate somewhere and handed U.S. officials, by all accounts, a large stack of documents saying, I want to help you. Here is some information. And most of this information was apparently garbage. It was either old information that we knew everything about mm -hmm. or it didn't mean anything at all. But yeah. there was one piece of paper that sparked all of this controversy. And that piece of it was a single piece of paper and it had information, I think about seven nuclear warheads in our arsenal. It had hand drawings of the reentry vehicles with little notations about this is how much it weighs and this is how, this is its diameter and this is roughly what it looks like. Uh, most of that information is not, in fact, classified. I've got a book right here, published in 1984, which contains information that you can, uh, that probably was in that document. You can also get some of that information off of the Internet. Some of it is in a book that I wrote last year. Why do you think they focused on you, Dr. Lee? My best explanation of this is they th think I'm, uh, you know, Chinese people. I was born in Taiwan. I think that's part of the reason. And the second reason, they want to find out some scapegoat. They think I'm a perfect for them to, to bring me. 
In other words, you have secrets. You were in Division X, which is the most secret. Yes, at, at uh, Los because, Alamos, right? Because for the last 18 years I worked at the X Division, I am the only one Oriental or Chinese people working on the top secret for the last 18 years. Um, there's no other people. Who In other words, you know the secrets. Oh, I know the top secret of a nuclear weapon very well, yes. I'm, I'm one of the uh, important people in our division. There was no effort to scapegoat no. this man. We have tried to protect his legal status, his reputation as much as we can. Oh, Mr. Secretary, you've tried to protect his reputation? You've ruined the man's life. He violated America's security procedures. A postscript. Ed Curran is an old FBI hand currently detailed to the Department of Energy to run their counterintelligence program. He worked for Energy Secretary Bill Richardson, and he is also responsible to the FBI director and the director of Central Intelligence. Late this past week, Mr. Curran told me, quote, One of the worst things that happened in this whole affair was the press feeding frenzy about Wen Ho Lee, triggered mainly, he said, by the coverage in the New York Times. He went on, when Wen Ho Lee's name surfaced, it was devastating to our investigation because it further alerted him to our continuing scrutiny. And beyond that, Mr. Curran said this, since Wen Ho Lee has not been proven guilty of anything and thus must be presumed innocent, the surfacing of his name has been devastating to his family and to his life.